Welcome to the final boot room of the 2021-22 season. Stuart Watson, we've made it. Game 46 of the League One campaign. Ipswich Town faced Charlton Athletic at Portman Road in the battle for 10th. Charlton aren't in the battle for 10th, but Ipswich are, and they could finish as high as 10th if they secure victory in the final game of the season. Excited? Yeah, really excited. Yeah, are Ipswich going to finish 10th or 11th? Tune in to uh, Bolton versus Fleetwood on your little transistor radios to see if a goal's gone in there. Bolton need just a point against a Fleetwood side still battling the drop to finish above Ipswich, guaranteed. Um, oh dear, how did it come to this? A season that <laughs> we were all so excited about at the start that we got all so re-enthused about once Kieran McKenna had come in and got his teeth into the team, even as recently as that. Plymouth win, we were thinking maybe it's still on, but it's it's finished on a bit of a damp squib, hasn't it? One one win in eight for Ipswich um, as we head into this um, curtain closer. Let's let's hope they can finish it on a bit of a high in front of those magnificent Ipswich Town fans who have turned up in their numbers home and away this season. Let's hope they can send us all off into the into the summer with a bit of a spring in our step. Mm, we're talking about a crowd of around twenty five thousand again this weekend, by the sounds of things, which is which is crazy, really, for a game that has so little, so little at stake. There's so much we could talk about about how and why we've ended up here, but um, I think it's it's ground we've covered before, and we will cover again. Don't you worry. So about the here and now of this big game with, with Charlton, if you're if you're Kieran McKenna, Stu, which you are not, um, how would you? How would you approach this game? I think for me, for me, it's a game I just want to win. Experiments aside, I, I, I'm putting my strongest team on the pitch to try and get a win in front of a big, a big crowd to end a run. I think it's is that five without a win now. And winning with no win in six at the end of the season wouldn't be great. So mm. that, that's that's my thoughts on it. Would you be Would you be chucking some experiments in anywhere? Maybe. I, I... I saw the logic in in holding off on that experimentation of trying to finish the season strongly as possible because winning is a habit and I don't think there's ever a, ever sort of meaningless games because it all adds to the kind of the culture of of a winning mentality at a football club but on the flip side of that he's tried to go with strong senior teams of late and they haven't been able to win people haven't necessarily taken their chance so if you are one of these younger players and you're seeing one win in eight and it's a home game in front of a really supportive home crowd, it's a pretty decent chance to to maybe blood one or two this weekend. Um, whether that's from the start or off the bench, I don't know. Some of the ones that we'll be talking about all played for the under-18s last night as we're recording this so on uh, Wednesday night. Uh, they played in a 7-0 Cup final win against Coventry at home. Does that give you an indication that they're more likely to be benched players than starters? I don't know, but um, there's a there's a couple of two or three positions that are probably under under discussion. I would say going into this one, what are they then? <laughs> which uh, <laughs> tell tell me more. Which uh, which which positions are under discussion? Do you think are we going to be talking about the striking position again? Striking position is always under discussion, Andy. We know that. I'll come to that in a minute. First position is Bagger or Burgess, left-sided centre-half. We've had that debate the last few weeks. Burgess was playing really well after replacing George Edmondson. Then he had the uh, bit of a daft moment with his red card at Shrewsbury. In comes Bagger at Rotherham as a, as a pretty solid league debut. Will he keep his place? Will it be Burgess back? Back comes Burgess and justifies that with a, with a really good performance. But um, maybe now going into this last game, you, you give Baggett the chance to go and play in front of the home fans for the first time in the league. Give him give him that little taste with nothing on this game. Perhaps. We'll see. Um, right side, Wes Burns. I wouldn't be taking any risks with him at all. He's had a a fantastic debut season is going to sweep the, the board with the awards. Um, he feels like I've been waiting for Wes Burns to just get hit by one of those uh, his tackles that he's on the receiving end of or for an explosive sprint up the line to see him pull up sharply. He's managed to come through the season without anything major like that. If he's got 
He obviously missed the game last weekend with a little bit of a, a bruising on the ankle. Um, as much as I'd like to see him score and become sort of joint top goal scorer in the, in the, the, the stats and everything, more than that, I want him to be fit for pre-season and ready to go again. And Kane Vincent Young came in and had a really solid um, sort of comeback performance, I thought, last last weekend. So as long as he's physically OK, I'd probably be going with, with Kane again on, on that right-hand side. Where else is there topics for conversation? Cameron Humphreys, is this, an, is this a fine opportunity to give a young man that's been spoken about so much the chance to come in and, and play. He's obviously played for the first team before, but was really thrown under the bus in terms of playing in that. He came on late on in that, I think it was the Charlton game, wasn't it? Yeah, it, it was. Um, yeah. So um, that was obviously after Cook had gone. I think everyone's heads were all over the place. That was a really angry, uh, rightly so, reaction from the away fans that day with, with Toto Enciala going over to confront them at the end. I think Cameron came on for the last few minutes of that match. It would be nice for him to get a, a more positive experience of um, playing for the first team th- this time around. The the man that he would replace would be Tyreek Backinson, wouldn't it? And I know he's someone that Ipswich have got to make a decision on this summer, whether they take up the option to buy him permanently. But I think we've seen everything we need to see from Tyreek Backinson. I don't know if you're going to learn a whole lot more from him for one more game. You're going to You're going to learn a lot more about how Cameron Humphreys as an 18-year-old deals with playing in front of a crowd of 25,000. So when you talked earlier about is it is it time to, for an experiment, I think I might be tipping towards going with Cameron Humphreys from, from the start in this one. Why not? Mm, I think, yeah, I, I would agree in, in other positions as well. If we talk about Dominic Thompson, we talk about the strikers who aren't sort of nailed on to be here next season and could well be leaving you're not going to learn anything new about any of those players. I don't think we're going into kind of this game with anybody in the last chance saloon of, or if they really, if they really do it in this game, I I think the mind is made up um, on, on all of them, Um, which is probably why, and and this is a, a, it's not a a massive debate to get into right now, but I would, I would make sure Macaulay Bond starts this game. I think it could well be his last game um, after, what was such an incredible start to his season has turned into a really difficult one for him. But I would like to see him start this game and hopefully come up with um, a good performance. And you never know, even even a goal. Or, and it might be a goodbye goal. We don't we, we don't know at mm. this point, but it might be. But um, you touched on it, Stu. There is, of course, the battle for the golden boot, Town's golden boot, which currently Bond still has in his, in his clutches on 12. Um, Wes Burns is on 11. And Connor Chaplin has come up on the rails, also on 11. There's a subplot for you. Who will be Town's top scorer this year? Yeah, Connor so Chaplin's I... come into a bit of form the last couple of games, hasn't he? He's uh, scored two in two, in two, but more importantly, I think, has been playing that number 10 role a lot more effectively, sort of challenge, challenging, channeling his, his that busy energy that he, he brings to the team in, in a more effective manner. Um I think I'd like to see him and him and Selena go again. Selena um, dipped out last weekend. I think he'd come come back in. Can we finish the season with a with another burst and Selena magic moment? But you just said there about Macaulay Bond, and that made the the hairs on the back of my neck stand up a little bit to think about him. And it probably would be a, a goodbye goal now, but boy, would he deserve that! And can you imagine the reception that he would get and how that would feel? Um, he's had, he's had a bit of a a bit of a frustrating, toiling, sad time the last six months from where he started the season to how how it's finished. Um, it feels like he might not be here next season, and it might be a goodbye goal. But for for sentimental reasons, wouldn't wouldn't that be nice for him to uh, for him to be able to finish the season on a high as well? Yeah, that'd be brilliant. Would be brilliant, wouldn't it? Um, you touched on the number tens there. And this isn't something that's going to change as of this weekend. But what I really want to see, and Selena and Chaplin are the two that I would play as well. I really want to see the step next. I want to see them connecting with each other a bit more. And and that's what I really want to see going forward. Is if if that if this system gets played more, we, we we're ne- we're never talking about these number tens as being a partnership. And 
really. They're kind of two individuals working on their sides and, and maybe with the striker. But I want to see them connect with each other more because there's two good players there, Selena and Chaplin. If they could learn, if, the, if, if, if the next step in this team's development is for them to link up more on the pitch and be at work as a pair and, and, um, and cause problems as a duo. I think that could be a really, really important mm. step for this team. It's not going to happen. This game against Charlton isn't going to be the magic moment where that suddenly clicks and that's what they're able to do together. But going forward next season, I think that's a big thing that could take this Ipswich team to an, to another level. And, and they are probably the two, uh, mm. the two to do it. Well, Luco's triggers is his contract now. So he's, he's here for next season. Maybe that's why, uh, he got he's got the nod in, in in recent weeks to make make sure that's got sorted. But I would like to see young Tawanda Chirewa maybe come off off the bench more more. I'd say Humphreys is the more likely starter, but he's a he's a left footed number ten. He scored a Penenka penalty in that aforementioned seven nil cup win this week. He's been an absolute goal machine for the under twenty three. Someone who's oozing confidence. These are the sort of games, sort of dead dead rubber against another team that's probably go, just going to go out and enjoy them themselves and play a bit of open football. This could be a no, nice little occasion for for uh, for him to make his his senior league debut um, for Ipswich Town at some stage as well. So um, there's still a few little bits of interest for, for Ipswich going in, into this game. It's just such a shame that it's not... Uh, it's not they're not going to count for anything in terms of a league position, but um, mm. these games can can sometimes make for quite entertaining ones. I mean, the Wigan game recently was was a pretty good spectacle, wasn't it? So, another one of those, please. Uh, Scott Fraser could have been a subplot in this, couldn't he? But I, I think he's missed Char- Charlton's last four games, um, presumably with an injury. So, unlikely to see him, I would say, in this one. Let, let's finish off with the all in, all important prediction, Stu. Um, Kick us off. What's that for the final time in 2021 22? Predict your winner. Draw. Charlton have been going okay recently. They've won six of their last nine. They've beaten Shrewsbury, they've beaten Rotherham, they've beaten Cambridge all in recent weeks. All, all teams, of course, that Ipswich have um, failed to get the three points against in recent times. So I've gone for a draw and I'll go for an entertaining 2 2, an open game of football. Um, one that hopefully is a, it feels like a positive. Okay, oh, oh, it's another draw, but one that it will be a decent performance. Hopefully, and some, we'll see some goals, and it will be quite entertaining. I'll see your two-two. I'll take you one step further. I'm going to go four-two to Ipswich Town. Brace for Bon, um, and we all feel very positive as we head home on sun, on Saturday afternoon. Um, looking forward to 2022-23. That's it for the boot room. Enjoy the game, um, and thank you for watching the boot room all season. We'll be back in July. <laughs>